Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club Part Fucking 4. Let's go. Oh that's right, Yuri's coming round, isn't she? Uh-huh. Yeah, right. I actually forgot that. There's no doubt she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Uh-oh. I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club earlier the other day. Goops. I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. So this is her house, is it? Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's house like we're family. That's a bit weird, mate. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I can finally find her. Yeah! I'm hoping this is the freaky shit. Well, that cow looks pretty freaky. <laughs> Fuck! Sayori! Knackers! I head. Everything about her behaviour is really uncharacteristic. Hmm. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you're doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I'm psychic. I know you too well, as well. Reasons. Share. Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Head. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? What? This is all my fault. What? If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings... If I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have worried about me at all. What? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's what the world... What? I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. <clears throat> it just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori, you're an idiot. I grab Sayori by the shoulders and throttle her! What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for it. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh. <laughs> Sayori gives me a crappy smile. You really put me in a trap head. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Sim, what? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Head? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Nice. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because you ain't got a watch. Because most days I can't find a reason to get out of bed. Well, know what that's like. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Because you get hungry. Why make friends? Don't then. Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. Hmm. I'm in shock. Mainly because I don't find it funny to do jokes about depression. So I'm not going to do much funny. I can't even figure out how to respond. Well, there you go. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me this entire time that I've known her? It's because you weren't paying attention! Did she really want so badly for me to just think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little bit better for you. That's why I'm your pal. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Ed. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, 
but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends of everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone else in the club, it feels like a spirit going through my heart. So it's just not pleasing you? So that's why, that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right. I don't understand. Well, I do, but me in game don't. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Head. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped me and everything could be... Try reading it too fast and fucked it. <laughs> but I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. No, fuck. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, uh, Ed. Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Head. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Head. I. Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. Sorry, I read that wrong in my head before reading it right out loud. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get pissed if you don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Head. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hooks are so warm, and that's really scary too. Oh! Now we've just committed to spending the whole day with her when we're meant to be doing stuff with Yuri. Shit. It's what I want. Mm. Dig a hole. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. Yay. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, which looks fucking identical to Sayori's, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri! I am sorry I wasn't home yet. This is my room. There's fuck all in it. No master system. No Mega Drive. No Sega Saturn. No Dreamcast. This is a shit room. I hate my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously at why I haven't got any Sega stuff on the walls. It's so empty of Sega. It's shit. They spell it wrong. I cleaned it before you came over, because I know you're a Nintendo and have bad taste, so I didn't want to offend you with my quality consoles. That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, uh, yep. I would be really embarrassed if you realised that Nintendo is crapper than Sega. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. That's just where I keep my pawn. Should we get started? No. Uh, yes. Oh wait, she's on about the festival thing. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help me with. Why has she just pulled out a pocket knife? The knife is strangely beautiful. It's a knife, mate. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched onto it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. It's still a knife. That's no ordinary pocket knife. I see you've played knifey spoony before. 
It looks really fancy. Uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Mm -hmm. Yuri, whatever it is, I probably will. To each their own, you know. If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yes, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Kinky bitch! They're just so pretty. And I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Ooh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. Yuri carefully hands me the knife without stabbing me, with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands and stab myself. Whoops. It feels heavy and extremely solid. It's because it's a fucking knife. Where do you even get a knife like this? A knife shop. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife in my index finger. That's stupid. Ow. Great. Even in the video game world, I'm an idiot. Head, why did you do that? I just said I'm a fucking idiot. I didn't expect it to be that sharp. So much of an idiot that I'm getting the voices wrong. I barely touched it. It's my fault. No, it's mine. I'm stupid. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. Will it be a shit knife if it weren't? It can cut through skin like it's paper. How do you know that? A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. And I cry for 20 minutes. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. Uh. She says it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. <laughs> it's, it's gone from sort of really emotional depressive where you shouldn't joke because let's face it depression is not something to joke about to kinky horny anime girl stuff fuck it joke around like mad kinda hard to know what to do in this circumstances for a fucking let's play oh please forgive me I wasn't thinking I alright you know what this might be a stupid thing to do but that's my style I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. What? <laughs> Why? Head! D -d Did you really just do that? Now we're even! Because it makes sense, doesn't it? I'll cut you if you like! No one. Yuri just looks at me like I'm a fucking idiot. Because I am. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not... <laughs> If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, head. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh. Yuri calls me weird. Yuri calling me weird and most normal person you've ever met, you bitch! I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? In the fucking first aid box. Okay, I've accidentally just gone and head-butted Yuri. We were reaching for the same thing. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm just unconscious. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. Reaching for the brush, innit? It's not your fault, at your face. There were droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck, so I lick them off. Is there something on my face? Yes, I'm... Yeah. You got red on you. Totally my fault. I'll get a towel. No, you're a towel! Maybe she has got a bit of a concussion, actually. Look at that face. If someone had just headbutted me and I looked like that, call a fucking ambulance. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Uh. Oh, she looks happy. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just 
Didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I started to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh. Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. My arm aches. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. Half through slightly put what? How can you only do half? What? I don't get it. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this horny, I mean dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm and suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Woohoo! <sighs> Yuri slowly pulls away. Knackers! Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. Well, now you can cuss. I didn't mean to space out. <laughs> it's fine. The moment is over, knackers. Where I'm trying to say... Well, fuck! What's wrong with me today? Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my... hand. I kind of like that about you. Well... How am I supposed to respond to that? Oh, do I get to make a choice? Yuri suddenly pulls back. Fuck! Sayori! Eh? Ah! Uh. Fuck! Oh, God darn it! Oh, cock block 2000! Shit! Sayori! Just now, we were. <laughs> it's okay, Ed. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Fuck. I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? Fuck you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me re really happy. That's a bit of a fib, isn't it? Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Oh, Fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. There's, a... There's not really a winning option here, is there? Well, lying ain't gonna do no good. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happy you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult shit right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I... I see. Sayori so forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> Is that what it feels like? To get stabbed in the chest? Fuck. I should write a poem about this. Sayori. So it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing? 
You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone had. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So. Sayuri's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayuri looks over her shoulders and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and legging it. Sayuri. I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. I can help. But there ain't no trippy shit, but things are definitely starting to pan into the whole depression side of things. It's the day of the festival, so hopefully something a bit different will happen. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry and gently rolled up to take with me. Uh, so we've got here. No one's here yet. Okay. I flipped to Sayuri's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Right. Don't think I need to read that one. Oh. I do know what is best for you. You notice how video game me uses much of the same sort of vocabulary as actual me, minus the swearing? Mm. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. This poem feels completely different from everything else in Sayori's writing. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself, says Monica. I quicken my pace. And teleport. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they've always been. Crap. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, since she's not picking up the phone neither. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Does she have parents? Sayori. She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Wake up, dummy! There is no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Whoa! got the headphone in here. That was some trippy fuck. The hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sorry, wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to puke. Just yesterday, I told Sorry I would be there for her. Shit. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Shit. Then why, why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession, 
That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Shit. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I'd just spent more time with her. It's fucking music. Walked to the school, gave her what she wanted out of our relationship, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Fuck the literature club. Fuck the festival. I just lost my best friend. With this crappy ass clown music in the background, I'm trying not to smile at it. Someone I grew up with, she's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. But I can load! Although I shan't. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 End. Uh, well that's, uh, some glitchy ass trip shit. Okay. This episode's going quite long for the final one. I'm going to load to my closest save to um, the point where you get to choose I love you and I will say that this time so bear with me I'm going to do that now ah oh. oh it said the save file is corrupt starting a new game and uh, I see an annoying girl running towards me from distance waving her arms like she's totally abused to attention draw to herself the girl is Missing go. What the fuck? Um, what the fuck? However, I just sigh. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh, no. Oh. What the magic! Um, okay. 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 <laughs> I really don't know what the fuck. I can only think that you can go through the game again and again and again, having them basically all die. That appears to be it. We're not going to go through it all again to see the other horrible tragedies that can happen. Well, I hope you've found some enjoyment out of this. I'm glad we found the trippy shit at last, because it is sure trippy. Um, the depression stuff was quite strong, but that's, that's not a bad thing. I think it does purvey quite an important message about things. So I'm going to make the game footage disappear quickly. I hope you've enjoyed these four videos on Doki Doki Literature Club. I hope you've um, enjoyed the comedy, enjoyed the story, the highlights that I've showed you, of course, and I hope you enjoyed the glitchy stuff, the trippy shit that we waited so long for we finally found. Even though it wasn't as much as I'd hoped for, it was pretty cool. And uh, for me, in particular, wearing the headphones, I fuck ever play a game with headphones, so when the sounds and all the... And all that shit was happening. That was quite strange for me. Yeah, it was really happening inside my head. But um, I just want to, I just want to say quickly about the depression part of the game. Now I know I've come across as kind of confident and a jokey person throughout just about all my videos, but while I am a jokey and sarcastic prat a lot of the time, I am not confident. I'm really not. I hide it quite well. And the thing about 
depression is that's what you do. You hide your true feelings a lot of the time. Now, I have experienced depression and I'm doing a lot better nowadays. I'm quite lucky to be in the situation I'm in. I have my own family. I have great friends. I've got new people that are willing to watch this. And that means a lot. And it really does help with some form of confidence, you know. But the other side of depression is you can be the person who knows someone who's depressed. And you try to consult them, consult them through what they're going through. But the thing about depression is it sort of, it's, oh, it singles you out. You could be in a room with many other people who are depressed and still feel so completely alone. And there's not a lot that can be done about that. I once lost someone, a friend, to depression. She was more of a friend of my wife's and me, to be honest. And she was someone very close to Kev. Now, you may know Kev from the Search for Sega videos I used to do. She took her own life. Sorry, it's very hard to put into words, but, um, yeah. She was in a state of mind where she didn't want to talk to anyone, which is probably the most common state of mind in depression. When you're depressed, you don't want to talk to anyone and you feel worthless. If you out there feel depressed or down, talking to anyone, that can really fix things. I know it definitely doesn't seem like it can, but it can make things better. If you don't want to talk to anyone you know, then don't. Talk to people online. There are all the helpful phone and hotlines and all that crap you can phone. But if you don't want to talk to someone, if you don't want it to be a voice to voice sort of thing, there's also options online. You could talk to someone like Boogie2988, a YouTuber. He's dealt with a lot of depression. You could talk to me if you like, but I should imagine you'd want to talk to someone else. So there are many options out there. And I just wanted to add this on the end. And uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed them. I'll see you next time.